it happened faster than I thought it would, and it happened faster than I wish it did. In 12 days, I am becoming an adult. I'm entering a chapter of my life that one could argue will never end until I die. You could say that being old is a different chapter or maybe retiring is a separate chapter, but you're still an adult in those things. So I'm leaving one chapter and I'm entering a new one. And, and it's scary. It is scary. Uh, I don't know what to expect. And it's scary because it's, it's coming regardless of if I'm ready or not, if I want it or not. It's coming anyway. I wanted to make a countdown of my childhood so that no matter how much time passes, I always have something to look back on. I always have this here in one place, something to just remember my childhood by, I guess. And as I inch closer to that new chapter, I have a lot of feelings, a lot of thoughts, and I wanted to share them. And who knows, maybe in a decade it could be fun to look back on. I don't know if I'm ready. You know, I don't, th I don't think I'd ever be ready. I guess that's my first uh, lesson in adulthood that you will not feel ready, but things will happen regardless. So deal with them. And I mean, that's a, that's a pretty good introduction to the, to the whole ordeal. But here is the countdown of my childhood. In June of this year, my family and I went on a vacation to San Diego. And every day felt so long. Every day felt like the length of three days back here at home, because we were always doing something, and it was always new, things we'd never done before. There was never a dull moment. But then we got back. And since then, my days have honestly just been kind of blending together. Every single day flies by. I don't do new things, which is on me. Every day just bleeds into the next and the next. I started my last year of high school not long ago, and that has helped spice up my life and add some variety to my days, but it's still very monotonous, I guess would be the correct word. A few months ago, for the first time that I can remember, I actually felt like time was moving faster for me. Everyone who's older will say that time speeds up as you age, but I never actually experienced it myself until recently, and now I know exactly what they mean. And I'm aware that it's only going to get more dramatic as I get older. I know I'm still so young, so it might sound weird to hear me say this, but I had this feeling of life passing me by. And it was for this reason that I started journaling in this notebook. I call it a note of it, because I just make little notes of it, it being whatever happened to me that day that I want to remember, or big things that happened in the world that I think are important or crazy. I want to capture my feelings and thoughts about these events as they happen, so that I can look back on them in the future and remember those moments with those raw emotions. I started this journal less than two months ago. And I swear to God, there are things I wrote in June that I guarantee you I would not have remembered had I not made an entry. I started journaling so that my days wouldn't seem like such a blur when I looked back on them years from now, and so they had more substance. 
and barely remembering some of those entries from less than two months ago only solidified my decision to start journaling. I want to continue for as long as I possibly can. I filled out 13 pages in two months, so imagine how much I could write in years. I'll eventually fill out this entire notebook, so I'll just get another one, and I'll label this one Volume 1, and the new one Volume 2, and then Volume 3, Volume 4, and so on. By the end of my life, I'd have dozens of these books, and you'd be able to spend weeks just reading my life story in chronological order. The good, the bad, the funny, the sad, the boring, and the biggest moments of my life. As long as I remember to make a note of it, they'd be in here. Anyone reading would be able to follow me along as I grow in real time. And it'll all be through my eyes, not anyone else's. Just my unadulterated thoughts and emotions. I started this in childhood, and I will continue, I'll try, until I can't. This will undoubtedly make my days seem longer and make my life fuller. It'll be a gift to future adult me from little old childhood me. I just need to make sure this doesn't catch on fire. I wanted to do something from my childhood, so I decided to rebuild a Lego. It's a green garbage truck about 12 years old that I had not touched for years, but as a kid, I would take it apart and rebuild it again and again. I was obsessed with it. It also had about an inch thick layer of dust on it, but I cleaned it off. Just don't ask me how. Speedrunning this. Last time I said that word in this seat, I got a world record. Now, I can rebuild it. <laughs> oh my god. Only this one isn't broken. This one is, so. Uh, yeah, okay, so that can't really go there, unfortunately. Okay, because that's broken. <laughs> uh, basically, <laughs> basically. The way this was supposed to work is you have these these trash cans full of garbage and you put them right there and then you go like this and then and then And just like that. See? We can try it again. Instead of this trash can, we have this trash can with a banana and two fish carcasses. And then... That's my, my garbage truck. That, uh doesn't, doesn't really <laughs> want to work anymore. I would build this again and again as a kid. I'd take it apart and it still worked at the time. And I'd, I'd take it apart and I'd rebuild it. I could, I could like, 
I could stick in there. Or... Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I could stick... It... Right there. Every single piece is actually together. Not necessarily... Oh, not necessarily where it's supposed to go, but... Okay, it works. I used to build this so many times. In the morning, I'd, I'd wake up, I'd, I'd eat breakfast before anyone else was awake, and then I would go into my room, take this apart, rebuild it. May not be held together as it once was, but it still has a place in my heart. There is a ton of new things I'll be able to do because of adulthood. I'll be able to vote. Eventually, I'll move out and own my own place. Hopefully, when I move out, if I move out, the freedom will be unreal. You could, if you wanted to, stay up till 2 a.m. cooking potatoes for tomorrow. In the same water, you cooked the potatoes in the night before. You get to make as much noise in the house as you want without having to worry about waking people up or annoying them. I can drive wherever I want, whenever I want. I can plan my own vacations and be the sole decider on what I bring. There's no authority I need permission from. <clears throat> I'll be in charge of everything I have, buy, do, or don't. Even small, stupid things like, and I'm serious, not having to lie anymore on the internet about being over 18. I'm currently lying about that on my Google account that this YouTube channel is under, because if I say I'm under 18, I get that stupid message, sign in to confirm your age. This video may be inappropriate for some users. Right now, my Google account lists my birthday as August 24th, 2003. I don't think I changed it three years ago. I'm pretty sure it was two years ago. I just moved it back an additional year, so it was further from the truth. I could have moved it up a year when I turned 17, but you know, I didn't want Google to catch on. But when I turn 18, I'll move it up to 2006. And it'll actually be true. It'll always be true. How cool is that? I can finally repent my sins to Jesus Christ. Another really big thing for me, and this one's more important to me than the age thing, is I've never flown before. Once, when I was a year old, that's it, and I don't remember anything. I want to experience flying. I recently told my family this at dinner, that I want to experience flying, and I told them that I want to experience everything, including the bad. Overnight flights. I want to try sleeping on a flight. A child screaming their head off, which I know is a weird thing to say, but I want to know what it's like for just 10 minutes. And then I will have had enough, and we can lock the child in the overhead bin. Strict TSA, or just going through security at all, I've never experienced it. What it's like boarding a flight or getting off, having to run from one half of the airport to the other in minutes because the gate's about to close. Experiencing the sheer size of an international airport. They are massive. They're so cool. See, they're so cool. Also just the feeling of flying through the air, if it feels like anything. What turbulence feels like. I don't know when I'm going to fly for my first time, but I can't wait. And I will do it one day. And that's gonna be a day to remember for me. Anyway, there's a lot that adulthood will bring, and I'm excited. I know I already spoke about vacations, but there's something else I've been doing since I was a kid that I've somehow continued doing unintentionally, and now I don't want to stop. When I was really little, my mom took me to the pet store because we were gonna buy a pet. I don't remember what animal it was, it may have been a bird, but whatever it was, I grew attached to one of them. And we were going to get them, but at the last second we decided not to. And I was really sad. Looking back, I'm actually really glad that we didn't buy the animal, because you shouldn't buy pets, you should adopt. And since then, all of our pets have been adopted or rescued. But I was only seven at the time, and I was very, very sad. I remember sitting in the parking lot of the pet store, in the car, crying, while my mom called my dad and tried to figure out a way to make it up to me. And she ended up driving me to a GameStop. And there, she bought me a Nintendo DSi. 
along with a few games. And from that point forward, I took pictures of everything with my DSi, like any kid would, including when my family would go on a vacation every summer to California. And over the years, as I grew, I never stopped taking my DSi on these trips. It was always one of the few things I'd pack in my little personal backpack. That vacation I mentioned earlier in the video, in June of this year, yeah, I took my DSi on that too. And took a lot of pictures. Hundreds. There was only one recent short vacation that I forgot to take my DSi on, but other than that, every single one that I can remember. And I want to continue. But it's not merely taking pictures on vacations that I want to continue, it's taking pictures on vacations with this Nintendo DSi specifically. Of course, it won't last forever, but if it breaks, honestly, I might just get a new one to continue taking pictures with a DSi. Yes, the photo quality is awful, you can't take video, and you can't move for about a second after taking the photo, or else it'll be blurry. But all of the photos, even the new ones, make me nostalgic. They just look right. They have that aesthetic, the slight blurriness, no matter how still you held the camera, the graininess, everything. Few things that I can think of represent my childhood better than this Nintendo DSi. With being an adult comes independence, but with that independence also comes the expectation that you know exactly what you're doing. And that's a lot of pressure, because there's so much to know and do, and it can feel isolating or harsh. You might feel like you've been thrown into the deep end of the pool before you're ready. People won't hold your hand anymore. There's probably going to be some people in your life, if you're lucky, who will lend a helping hand if you need one. But I'll have to acclimate to that new situation where no one's really coming to save you you have to save yourself. Of course, I do plenty of things nowadays independently or with little supervision or guidance, but it's not everything. And I'm going to have to learn for it to be that way. Ultimately, it will be for the best because living your life independently where you can truly support yourself fully is liberating and the best way to live. But it might royally suck at first. We'll have to wait and see to find that out. In order to be a functioning adult in society, there's a certain level of emotional intelligence that must come along with it. So I'm going to have to work on my emotional intelligence skills. But there can be a fine line between that very useful, crucial emotional intelligence and fakeness. Finding that balance can be difficult. Being fake means not being honest to yourself and to others. But to be emotionally intelligent, you can't always be honest immediately. For example, having to keep the thought to yourself that your friend kind of deserves the fact that their girlfriend or boyfriend left them, but you can't say anything yet because you need to comfort them. Not to mention, they are not in a good place emotionally to actually take on what you say. But a little later, once you've comforted them and they're better able to receive your message, you can sit them down and have an honest conversation about how their actions, or lack thereof, led to the breakup. However, you can't not have that conversation with them, and putting it off for too long can be just as damaging. Knowing the right time and the right way to express it can be tricky, and you may not always get it right. Teenagers get a taste of this, but it's kicked up a notch in adulthood because you have more connections with people, more complicated connections with people. It's one of those things that will be largely learned through trial and error. And even though I know it'll be hard, I'm excited to try navigating those waters myself. They're choppy, no doubt, but rewarding. The intro of this video was filmed 11 days ago. 
those 11 days have gone by fast. It's the 24th. It's past 2 a.m. So it's technically my birthday, but I wasn't born yet, so I'm not 18 yet. But I am ready to go to bed. When I wake up, it's over. Forever. I was born early enough in the morning that when I wake up, I will be 18. So, I'll close my eyes for the last time as one thing. And when I open them, I will forever and always be another thing. This is a big moment. I'm tired. Had a very busy, long day. So. Good night. Well, well, well. A segment of my life has closed. It's in the books. Can't be changed. I know I'm still a child, and still immature. I know I'm not going to change instantly, and I might not actually get more responsibilities, feelings, and experiences that come with being an adult until much later. Maybe I'll be 20, maybe 23, maybe 25. I don't know. I'm mostly just excited about being in a new chapter of my life. And regardless of how slow or fast it'll happen, I will absolutely experience new things. I'll change so much, both physically and mentally. I'll learn countless invaluable skills and things that I never had to consider before. And perhaps most excitingly for me, I will hopefully meet many new people and forge strong, long-lasting relationships with them. Some of them, hopefully, romantic. Undoubtedly, unequivocally, I will face more than a couple of reality checks. I will most likely have more than a few moments I won't want or enjoy. I will probably look back at my past self, including myself right now, and be embarrassed at the way I used to think, talk, look, or the things I used to do. I mean, I'm already that way with my 16-year-old self, so let's be real, that's guaranteed. I will make many mistakes and stupid decisions. There are unpleasant or even horrible events and experiences that are coming my way. But you wouldn't have adulthood without all of these things. And I'd be lying if I said I wasn't, in some weird way, looking forward to them too. I'm just excited for that change. And I know those changes won't come the night after my 18th birthday, but they will only come because I have passed my 18th birthday. That's why this day is so special and big to me. As a child, things seemed simpler. They were. But now, I think I'm ready to appreciate the complexity of adulthood the convoluted, confusing mess that vaguely resembles a roller coaster ride that you can't get off and that sometimes feels like the brakes stopped working. And every now and then, you'll feel like you saw a crack in one of the support beams. And you know what? Maybe the next time around, you actually will hit your head on that precariously placed rusted girder because you sit up too high as you pass under it because it's mere inches above the heads of the tall people. Also, HOA letters. I know life won't be perfect. But that's what makes it fun, and worth it. I'm ready to face everything, the good and the bad, with an open mind, open arms, and an open heart. I know the worst moments of my life, and the best moments of my life, are going to be within this new chapter. My highs will be higher than I can currently comprehend, and my lows will be lower than I could ever imagine. I'm genuinely thrilled to see where this chapter takes me. 
I can't wait, and I won't have to. Things will arrive before I know it. I want to be careful not to over-romanticize or glorify adulthood, because it's not always fun, but it'll bring so much fun that I can't help but view it that way right now. Maybe once I get a taste for it, my opinion will change and I'll hate adulthood with every fiber of my being. Who knows? But as of now, this is how I feel. Childhood's been fun, but the best is yet to come. The countdown of my childhood is done. Thanks for coming along with me. Thanks for watching.